Hey there, Joey from Day Job Hacks. Today we're gonna to talk about native ads again. I'm gonna go inside and show you an actual campaign I am running. Talk about why some of the things are failing, why it may have converted in some places. And we're gonna talk about some of the strategies you need to consider as you move forward in native ads, especially in this day and age when there's so many different places to get native ads. What platforms are the best and why am I not going to be using some platforms going forward? So everything you need to know about native ads is coming up in this video for free. Please also like, subscribe to this channel if you like anything related to media buying online. And we'll see you inside my computer as we go in there now to check out the campaign. All right, here we are inside. I wanna answer a bunch of questions around native ads. I know a lot of people are interested in running native ads. I've run native ads for about seven years and I have a lot of experience. I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on it. So what better way to show native ads and how they work, especially for digital marketers or media buyers, than to actually go into a sample campaign, okay? I know people like to see sample campaigns. If you do, then make sure you subscribe to my channel because I do this a lot, okay? So here is a keto diet campaign I'm running currently on MGID to get some data. Um, whether I run this and try and scale it on MGID or not, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna show you some of the strategies and things that you need to consider and why I like other platforms above MGID for the most part. So here we go. This is a campaign I started 1300 clicks on my tracker, which is CPV Lab Pro, as you can see here. Inside MGID, I spent roughly $351 got two conversions. Those conversions didn't actually track into MGID, even though I had the post back set properly. So I need to examine that. That's why currently the campaign is paused. Um, I did happen to get the two widget IDs, which I'm gonna show here in a second, how to get widget IDs. I'm not gonna actually show the two converting widget IDs. Sorry about that, but uh, I just don't need any more competition right now. So as you can see here, the beauty about running uh, native ads for diet, I'm going to show you my ads though, is that you can pretty much run anything and, and be really competitive, sorry, be really aggressive in your ads. Okay, so here's an example of an ad and this is the one that converted. Um, you won't believe what she used uh, what she used to lose all of the weight. Okay, so basically you, you can't do this stuff on Facebook or Google. Um, you can't show before and after pictures. Okay, so these are the things you can do on native ads that you can't typically do on other ad platforms. This is why people go to native ad platforms for the most part um, because of the fact that you can you know, do this. However, when you do this kind of thing, um, you're also opening yourself up to a lot of bad traffic because these platforms like MGID, Rev Content, Taboola, they all have tiered traffic basically, meaning if you if you try and do something super aggressive like this, you're not going to be able to get on the high placement or the best placements like M MSN, for example, or some of these really big ones like CNN. Um, they're, they're filtering out these types of ads and they're putting them on their more, uh, I guess, less sensitive placement. So you need to really work with an ad manager on these platforms to figure out where you're actually going to get placed and where uh, you know you need to get them to put your ads in front of the right people. So if you're trying to do this blind and you're not working with somebody inside these platforms, you're really gonna fail, um, in my opinion. The problem with MGID compared to other platforms like Rev Content and Taboola, let's talk about that right now. What is the problem here? Um, First of all, when you're running ads on these platforms, you're typically trying to track the, the target placement IDs, okay? In some cases, like MGID, they're actually giving you a bunch of numbers, which is really hard, okay? And if you ask to get the data around what URL you're actually running on, they'll oftentimes not give it to you unless you only ask for maybe one or two. If you try and get a whole list of placements that you're getting, um, your ads shown on, they're not going to show you that, which is kind of unfortunate because the way ad platforms are moving in the future and, and currently in the industry is it's so highly competitive. Why do you have to hide this data? It doesn't matter. We're going to find out where our ads are anyway. So why don't you just give us that information? And this is precisely why I choose other ad platforms which provide the extra data. For example, coming into Rev Content, if I see my conversions and it shows me the actual URL, why wouldn't I go here 
instead of trying to deal with a bunch of numbers. Now I can actually take these URLs, check them out, see if they're actually placements I want to have my ads on. I can check out more details, like bring it into a tool like uh, SimilarWeb and see if there's other properties that I can also target, right? Instead of dealing with these widget IDs that, you know, it, it just doesn't make sense. Now, Taboola is another one. I've done training inside Powerhouse Affiliate on Taboola, showing, you know, setting up an ad and all that stuff. Again, they show you the domains, the actual placements that you're getting your traffic from, which is great. Now, there's other platforms out there that do that as well. So make sure when you're choosing your native ad platform that you're looking for ones that aren't super suspicious about their, their, their widget IDs. Okay, this is the, a thing of the past, in my opinion. Get rid of the widget IDs. Let's start dealing with actual placements. Okay, so that is a big thing. Now, the other things you need to consider is that you're going to be getting thousands of clicks. Um, and, and they're probably not even going to match. Like, for example, let's go back to the dashboard here at MGID. And you can see I have 1,172 clicks here. But inside my tracker, I have 1,302. So there's a rough, roughly, you know, more than 10%, almost 20% of clicks I'm not paying for. So I'm getting extra clicks into my tracker. So there's, there's going to be discrepancies. If you try and fight your brain to try and figure out where all this is happening, I mean, it's going to waste so much time. So don't try and figure out the exact click amounts, but you can just factor in to the matter that there's probably a bunch of bots going on here. There's a bunch of filters. There's different countries coming in from different placements, and you just have to weed through all of that and try and get your data. The next thing you need to do when you're running native ads is you need to make sure you're testing multiple landing pages. When you run only one single landing page, you're simply just not going to win. Many people will come into these platforms like Adplexity and they'll find a landing page that they think is going to work. They'll take it, they'll rip it, they'll run it, and all of a sudden they realize nothing is working. Oh my God, look how disgusting this ad is. I just realized that as I'm looking at this page. But anyway, as you're running these pages, you should be actually tweaking them, changing them to whatever thing you want, like to, uh, changing the headlines, changing the images, changing the text, everything, because all of these pages here are pages that have been running for so long and the people that are winning are the people that are constantly split testing. And I've said that in the previous video I just did this week actually, that the, most of these pages you need to actually tweak. So when you click on these ads, this is Adplexity. You can get that at dayjobhacks.com slash Adplexity. You can actually get a huge discount using that link and it's also in the description below. But coming in, you can see that one of my landing pages clearly was the winner. If I would not have known that had I just started with landing page one. I needed to test four landing pages before finding the one that has the highest click-through rate and the one that converted twice, okay? So this is the page that I will move forward with and then I'll tweak it and, and you know split test it to maybe run this one at 80% versus another one at 20% and constantly split testing. Ads is the next thing, okay? These are the teaser IDs. If you're not collecting that from your native ads platform, you're not gonna know which ad is actually converting. Again, you can see right here, this one is the best ad out of all the other ones. So when I come in to my MGID platform and click on the ads, I can actually see which ad is the one that is converting, okay? So what are the next steps that I'm going to be taking when it comes to, to deciding what to do with this campaign? So a lot of people at this point may consider quitting the campaign because there's only two conversions. I only made roughly $75 and I spent 350 so I'm actually down about 80% on this campaign is that does that mean I have to quit now or should I try it again knowing everything I know inside this campaign I know one ad converted I know one landing page converted extremely well and I know two placement IDs that converted so why wouldn't I just take those specific pieces and put them together and run it specifically on that and then scale from there. And that is precisely what I will be doing, okay? And the only way to do that is to work with an ad rep and say, hey, there's two placement IDs. I want both of these. I wanna know where they are. Let's go in, let's find other placements that are similar to that. Let's set up this landing page, this ad. Let's just split test maybe one extra ad against it and let's go from there. So that is why a lot of people fail at native ads is because they aren't broadening the scope at the start of their native ads and, and running broad 
to find out these little pockets of information and then bringing all that information back into one campaign and testing from there, okay? So um, moving forward, here are a few of my tips. I would say maybe start with a, a platform that allows you to see the actual placements. That way you get more data, you can see the actual placements that are working. You can make the decisions yourself as to whether these pages are the ones that you wanna focus on, okay? Finding similar placements to a domain is a lot easier than finding placements related to a single digit or a digit like a number, like a widget ID, okay? So check out Rev Content, Taboola, um, and other platforms out there that do share those placements. Not to say MGID isn't a good platform and, and they don't have good traffic. I'm just saying that there are other ones out there that make it easier, especially if you're just starting out with native ads. Um, if I had zero conversions at this point, I would totally pause this and move on. But the fact that I have two conversions, I, I think there's enough information here to at least give it another shot, um, maybe with uh, a couple hundred dollars, just to see if it's going to work. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions about native ads, don't forget to check out our advanced training at powerhouseaffiliate.com. There's links in the description for discounts on all the tools, as well as there are some traffic credits on some ad platforms out there for anyone who wants to try this themselves. Okay, best of luck. See you next week.